opening up spiritual gates so that we may be able to enter into the realms of the spirit, into the supernatural realms and redirect, um, redirect situations. Uh, I'm still on the part of prayer, but the subtopic I want us to entitle is uh, realigning circumstances, situations, and conditions by prayer. Let's call it that way. Realigning circumstances and situations and conditions by prayer. Because remember we say that whatever happens in your life, don't think it has just started here. No, the, it, it has a bearing in the invisible realm, in the, in the supernatural realm. Everything. Whatever you are going through, there is a place where it is being orchestrated, where it is, where it is originating, when you see a sickness, don't think it has just started here on, the bo on your body. There's a spirit behind that. Uh, when you see a lot of unfortunate events and situations coming over now and again, and you don't know what is going on, don't think, oh, uh, you are unlucky for conditions to, to be against you. You must understand that the, the, the reality of the spirit world. You must know that the spirit world is as real as the natural world. The earthly realm where we live is real, but I want to say the supernatural realm is as real. And I always say it's more real than even the natural. Why? Because from the scriptures, what we see, the visible things, are created by the invisible. You get? If the visible, which is a, a, a byproduct of the invisible, is so real to us, how much about the source? I always love to give normal example. You get? Now let's see, let me give the, the example of the technology with the software, the computer. Yeah? Now, man, the thing is highly intelligent. In a split of a second, it will do a calculation which you can't do. Isn't that amazing? And yet the man that makes it is hard to put together that. So for you to see the intelligence of the computer, and you conclude that uh, it is more powerful or it existed by itself will be a greatest error of your life. And that's what we do in this earth. Because we see things are too big, we think, no, this is very powerful. No, the, the creator, the manufacturer has designed it, has made it. These days, because of the progress in technology, they have invited artificial intelligence and things are beyond our human comprehension. They are too much for the natural mind to configure. But all this, all this technology advancement is designed by a man. And now for me, I say, if man can be as intelligent as this, that he does mind-blowing things, eh? It makes your brain to stop thinking. You, you just can't go beyond that. Huh? Then how, how, how is the genus and intelligence of our sovereign God? So nothing simply happens in the natural. When you see a manifestation of any object, then there is a designer for it. So if you see the earth, you think about the creator of the earth. And he's the Lord God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. We may not fully fathom him because he's an infinite God with infinite wisdom. Unfathomable. It's too huge for a little brain he put in man to, to figure him out. And that's why we simply yield to him and with great reverence because he is in his own class. And yet, 
in all that, he has made us in his own image and in his own likeness. And that's why we are so much honored and privileged by God that, you know, he has allowed us to share his own glory and his own life. Even though he's as greater tens of thousand times and millions of times than us. He has crowned us with honor and with glory and given us his life to live it. What a beautiful God. Give him a clap of praise. So everything that happens, the situations that are going on, conditions, circumstances, or events that come our daily walk, our daily life, has a source. And my, my endeavor on this teaching is to show you that there is a way you can align yourself with God and realign the events and situations that ought to happen in your life. Amen? So you can redirect events to take a different flow. Or you can get certain events out of your life if you so desire. If you know the art of prayer, you can block certain things from happening. But you can also channel other things into your life. And that can all be done through prayer. And let's go quickly to the book of James. And, and, and have been showing us, praise God. James chapter number five. Let's begin up, though I will put emphasis down there. I was going to talk on verse 70, but let's begin from up. Because just read through. Uh, let's begin from uh, verse 13. Is any, uh, anyone among you suffering? Is anyone among you suffering now see the answer he gives us if there is one person suffering if you are going through suffering if you have experiences that are taking your peace your joy your comfort he says let that one pray let him pray anyone that is suffering let him do what pray so prayer is the antidote of suffering. So it can stop the suffering. So we are saying that suffering, why is prayer, why would prayer be the antidote of your suffering? Because you are suffering. What is trying to say, which is not explained as scripture, you are suffering is orchestrated by forces you don't see, by forces invisible, and yet powerful and subjecting you and a suffering that you find you are in a situation that you are not pleased with. And why does he let him pray? Because when you pray, you are coming also, you are tapping into the invisible supernatural power that is going to come now to counter attack the attacker that has come on your life. You are bringing the power to subject what is subjecting you under subjection. So when you are praying, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are invoking God. You, you are not only invoking God, you are provoking God to act and to deal with the spirits or the powers that are subjecting you to suffering. So if anyone among you is suffering, what should he do? He should pray. Should he go telling everybody how they are suffering? No, that might not change your suffering. 
going and telling everybody how you are suffering, how some people are not liking you, how they are not taking care of you, how they don't love you, how they, they hate you, how they are talking against you, that won't end the suffering. It may even aggravate because even those you are telling, they are also going to form another clique and also start talking against you. And then you find that the gamble against you is everywhere. And now people start saying, ah, ah, that one I'm tired all the time. She's the one who is talking about this, talking about, I am tired of her, her negativity around me. She releases negative energy. Every time you associate with her, you feel stressed, eh? Because she releases very negative energy. She only tells you about all how things can't work out, about how people are bad. She only gets you to a place where you start looking at people as bad people. The devil is a liar. You know, so that does not solve. But what, what James is saying, if there is anyone suffering, let him pray. Because if you pray, whatever has orchestrated suffering in your life is going to be brought under subjection. And this suffering here is in, a, in a different forms in your life. People suffer so many things. Some people suffer pain differently. There are others suffering physical pain, but let him pray. Others are suffering emotional distresses. Let them pray. Others are suffering depression, things that are beyond explanation. Let them pray. Others are suffering mentally. Let them pray. So the suffering is at different spaces, different levels. Others are suffering through social lifestyles. Nature and situation circumstances have been so negative. There are things that we are not responsible to happen in our lives and yet we find they are happening. For example, you rise up and you find you are an orphan, you have lost all your parents, you have lost everybody around you. You are subjected to an orphanage, torture and torment and oppression by life itself. It's, become, it's kind of become unfair for you. Now, if, if you cannot rise up the bar to pray, you, 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 you go worse and worse and worse by what you're going through. So that's why as believers, we are not left alone. We have a God and we can approach him through prayer. We can access his presence. We can tap into his love. We can receive the Holy Spirit to comfort us. We can have the word of God and brings comfort in our hearts. And we are strengthened and the suffering is gone. Hallelujah. And we always tell people, like I keep telling people, whenever you find somebody suffering from stress. Do you know stress? We have some medical doctors here. These medical doctors, they can tell you one thing that there is no cure for stress. So, and when you only go to the doctors, all they can do is to give you certain um, tablets to calm you down. Amen? Seductives, very stronger drugs to calm your mind down. But it is not, they can force you to sleep, but you reach a place even when that can't work anymore. And the mind breaks down. And that's why sometimes the doctors will never tell us the whole truth, by the way. They never tell you the very side effects of certain things they do on us. And the whole system has been designed like that. True story. Dr. Sand, don't say I am a bad man. <laughs> True story. Professionally, they are not supposed to speak certain things. They are supposed to reserve certain information. Deep down, they might know what that means to you, but they are taught and trained not to say certain things. And we will suffer things because we were ignorant. Because we are not told the truth. I thank God for the truth of his word because it exposes every lie and all darknesses and everything. Give Jesus a killer for praise. <laughs> so when we pray, we bring God in the equation of our situations. We bring God in our circumstances when we pray. That's why I tell people, if you are going through stress, you know what to do? Pray in the spirit. 
take one hour. If you go through a season of it will, within a few days, you'll be better. Absolutely. Because now what is the, the stressing spirits is a torment that caused your mind to be tormented or have anxious or anxiety, thoughts of anxiety that cause the stability and the tension in your life and then depression, all that, and you are, you are overtaken. The, the white is a lot. And very soon sleep goes and very soon the body begins to get tired. The mind is exhausted, tormented and tortured by every demon, demonic lie, beaten up by all the hours of the night. Now, if you're a person who just loves to sleep and you pray less, you will hear all the lies from hell, tormenting and bombarding your little mind and your little brain. And being assured how you are going to die. And being assured how everything is working against you. And he may even start showing you your children, if you have children, how you are going to leave them as orphans. And sometimes people start even seeing the coffin, they, they are going to die. And others start dreaming that they are dead. Yeah, some people have told me they dreamt that they are, they are dead. Hmm? Those are very deep stuff. Amen. So when, when you are praying in the spirit, the Bible says the one who prays in the spirit according to 1 Corinthians 14, praying in tongues does not speak to man. No. He's speaking direct unto God. He speaks direct. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man, but to God direct. It's a direct communication to God. The source of life. The source of power. And not only power, but extraordinary, over, overwhelming power, incomparable power. <laughs> Amen. The power that is beyond what we can explain here. He is the source of that power. And he's that same power. So he will, he will, uh, he will do away with those powers that have tortured you. Let the spirit connect with your spirit. And before long, a rest and calmness has started to come into your life. This is, if we can understand this, we will transform our world. We will make our world better. I have seen the way you put your heart to God in prayer and bring God's anointing into that situation. He'll destroy every burden. But if you don't pray, those spirits don't respond to your lamentations. No. They can only hear one language. It's the, the supernatural language of God. Only. Spirit to spirit. That's why if you are carnally oriented, you cannot win this battle. Let me just... We were thanking God early this morning with my wife. We... We, we, we do a lot of ministry of counseling for people with marriages because there a lot of people come to us. They appreciate our marriage. They, uh, 11th, after tomorrow, we are making 32 years in a holy marriage. <laughs> and we are still being renewed looking younger and growing stronger from glory to glory. Amen. And so people who are, are, are navigating five years, two years, three years, they are struggling with a lot of things and they, they can't understand. They feel, eh, how can you manage to reach those years? I'm tired, man. Things are not easy. Every day is hard. Guys are going through stuff. So we share our experiences. But among some of them, we share always, always, one thing that we always encourage people, we will ask them, do you pray together? No. Okay, so now we are ready to, to understand what is the problem. This true story. Do you pray together? No. So the moment you can't pray together, you know what Jesus said when two of you 
agree together on anything on the earth shall be what? Yes, it will be accomplished. It will be done for you. So get in agreement in prayer, husband and wife. The highest level of agreement we can find it between husband and wife. Take advantage of your being too. There are people who are single. They can suffer alone, but two are better than one. So join the force. Release the anointing together. Agree together in prayer. And the story is going to change. True. Because it is a, a principle of the kingdom. A God cannot contradict his word. The moment you have that agreement, joining hands together in one accord, in one spirit, and you pray, something must happen. A change must happen. And so we meet this couple. And we, um, when we meet them, they have come to the place they can't be together. They have gone. Each one says, okay, it's done. For now, maybe God will heal us, but for now we can't be together. And for us, he says, we are not, I don't preach the gospel of separation or divorce. I don't know it. I was sent to preach the gospel of reconciliation. What God has put together, no man should separate, so I'm not part of the separation deal. Okay, don't come to me for counseling how you should separate. I'm not going to take care of that. That's not my assignment. I know it very well. I know what God has called me to do. And the anointing is upon me. Praise God. And it is powerful upon my life. So we come to meet this couple. Where they had reached a, a melting point. Do you know a melting point? No, if you are not married, you can't understand it. A melting point is a point in your marriage where you, you can no longer put up together. It's a, enough is enough. You are fed up to the very marrow by even seeing somebody and even just to see them or to hear them is enough to get you out of life. <laughs> now we, we, we just, of course I was very busy and I, I tell you resolving conflict or conflict resol resolvement is the most tough thing. Because you must be prepared to sink your good hours in that business. You must take, and the hours, even if they can be five hours, you can't even tell how they go. So it is the worst thing. You, your spirit must self be strong. You understand? And if you are stronger, you can carry back a home same spirit. You have been counseling others, and then you go back and you start suffering same things. So those of you who just go wearing the flesh, be careful. <laughs> Praise God. But this is the truth. Eh? You get. So we speak. We share. We Then I said, let me just go for a short call. Then I said, I want to pray. I said, Lord, I truly need wisdom. And when I come back and speak to these people, I want your wisdom. So I only told them that I went to pray. Because I felt, let me just get a little of my direction from God. These guys, everybody's talking. The other one is the worst. The other one is the terrible. The other one is the bad one. The other one is... Then I just begin by putting them at the same page. Whenever there is a conflict, both are wrong. When you quarrel, there's no one who is right. Isn't it true? So I first put us, we agree on that. Every time there is a, a disagreement between two people, everyone is responsible. But nobody accepts. Everybody wants to say it is the other one. And, and that, that, that spirit is bad. Because it really persuades all your mind and everything that it, for you, you are right. And it is, that one is the wrong one. It's, it's a lie. The devil is a liar. But then when you come later out of it, that's when you realize how the devil is a liar. Because he, he can never cause you to see you are wrong. But the moment there is a class between two, everybody is accountable and is responsible. And when we start from there, we will solve a problem. But if we can't agree, 
and take responsibility of our wrongs, we'll never receive victory. So after praying, the Lord just guided me and I began from there. I'm not for either of you. I love you as my spiritual son. I love you as my spiritual daughter, but I'm not here for you. I'm not here. I'm here for God. Okay? So what you hear from me is what God is going to give me. I'm not taking side because you are all wrong. But let me get wisdom from God. Hear your wrongs and hear your wrongs and I start here you are wrong, here you are wrong, here you are wrong and this is what the word of God says this is what the word of God says, this is here you are wrong, you are wrong and this is where the word of, is it true? said yes so after all that now I have to trust the powerful anointing on my life because now I know there aren't marriage demons which have invaded these innocent people and they do not realize they are only captives but you know, Jesus said, the spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me. Preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to you, the broken hearted ones. He has sent me to set the captives free. So now, we need to pray and release a powerful anointing. And in my spirit, I'm invoking this mighty anointing to deal with these demons of ant marriage. Divorce is definitely not of God and he hates it from day one. So I come to pray, not simply to pray and we go back home. Okay? But to release the anointing to destroy every anti marriage demons which are said to ruin these people's marriage. God is so powerful. And by the time we finished, now we are ready for reconciliation. Can you imagine people that have been already not staying together? And they have decided to, to go apart. They are going back home for the best honeymoon. <laughs> now, how, how is that possible? And when you look at the end of the day, after three or four hours of counseling and prayer, people are ready to say, Honey, forgive me. Honey. <laughs> I'll never do it again. Ah. Ah. These spiritual things are so powerful. And then there is this hugging together. And, and now when you are the one ministering to them and then you see people in their bosom hugging each other. They will never get closer to bed together even in the same house, but now they are going to be together in the same bed and have the best honeymoon. This is how God changes situations. Give Jesus a killer pop prize. <laughs> but when I'm dealing with this case in prayer, I know just like we confront sickness, spirits of sickness, you get it? Eh? So in my mind, I'm, I'm dealing with the demons of, of anti-marriage, spirits that have been sent or castrated from hell to ruin this marriage, to separate these people, to fail them. So you is ministering, you are releasing the power of God intentionally to deal with that. And now people will laugh again together. And now we get, okay, now uh, when I ask God for wisdom, he gives me understanding what is the source of this? What, what are this, the way forward? What are the critical things that they take home which assignment which I must give these people? So I get my summary of assignment. Okay? To end all this, take care of this. We are going to take care of this. We are going to take care of this. We are going to take care of this. Will you make a move? Because if you don't move, you waste my time to pray, to speak into your life. So you must deal with this as a solution. And I commit them. Those are commitments. Practical steps you're going to take to, to come out. Because if you don't take any new practical steps, you're going to stay back where you were. Isn't it? So, and we define, we show them what to do. And, uh, and we all go back. You know, they came at different places because they can't come together in the same car. Now they enter the same car. 
and drive back home. Jesus is powerful. And now you, and I'm giving you this to show you what happens when we pray. And sometimes for us, we are too busy. We cannot help people. And also, I felt as I looked at this, I said, I have, Lord, you've got to use us. Because sometimes people have nowhere to go. Because when they think about the other person, they look at their lives, they cannot help them. So again, you find people don't know where to go. So I feel the burden to respond and become a vessel with my wife in that space. So this morning, when we looked at what happened, I said, I told my wife, I said, the anointing of God is so powerful. It destroys every yoke. And our part, me and you as ministers and believers, is to release this powerful anointing. And this anointing can be released through prayer. Remember I said God's anointing is given to you for ministry. Amen? To accomplish God's will. That's why we have this anointing. To do what God would do. Are you hearing me? That's why we carry it. So the anointing is not for us to feel good, but to do what God is able to do. Because God works through me and you. God flows through us. He uses us. We are vessels of God. We are the channels. If there is any manifestation of his power, display of his glorious works, it must be through us. And that's why Prayer becomes a way through which this anointing and power of God that can liberate, can heal, is channeled to reach the person in need. So if we don't pray, we cut off God. We cut off the supply of power. We cut off the supply of healing. We cut off the supply of blessing. And that's why it says if anyone is suffering... Let him, let him pray. Keep us there again. Let him pray. Anyone who is suffering, let him pray. Because suffering will stop. I mean, prayer will stop the spirits that have been assigned or released from the kingdom of darkness to afflict you. Of course, these demons or spirits, they are invisible. You don't see them. And their only work on this earth is to torment people, to afflict them, to cause them to stop progressing, to cause them to stop advancing, to cause them to cry, to cause them to groan, to cause them to suffer. That is what the devil does. He has no other agenda on humanity. And for you to imagine demons are not here, you are very wrong. And you are untaught in the supernatural things in the spirit world. Let him pray. And is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. So we will see when we are talking about the other key of, of praise, that praise is another key to open up the gates. So when, when you are cheerful, when we sing psalms, when we praise God, when we adore him and we worship him, we bring his glory into our lives. And when his glory comes, it's not only we can't stay where we were yesterday. We will see progress, we'll see promotion, we'll see advancement, we'll see expansion. Hallelujah. We'll see things going good in our side. We'll see open doors. We'll see freedom, chains breaking, shackles falling off, obstacles getting away. High grounds leveled, low valleys filled up. Crooked places made straight. Are you hearing me, beloved? Let him sing psalms. Go to the next verse. That is the whole praise part we shall deal into as a special key, but we are under prayer. But we can, this scripture, we can see that. Okay, go to the next verse. Okay. And is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him. If there is one... Uh, chapter and verses in the Bible talking about prayer it is in this those few verses you'll see the word prayer repeated several times 
And I told you every time in the scripture, okay? Every time you read, you see repetition of same words. Please settle there. Sometimes I go back and start underlining it to count how many times is God repeating himself. Of course, you know, when the, those of you study English, when you are repeating yourself, you are giving emphasis, isn't it? So be, God is giving emphasis. It's not that he has lacked words. He has many words, but he's showing the power of prayer. So he keeps on going back to the word pray and prayer. So if there is anyone sick, they should call the elders of the church. And when the elders of the church, what, when they come, what should they do? Pray over him. Give Jesus a clap of praise. Pray over him. Let the elders of the church pray over him. The ministers in the church pray over him. And that's why we encourage all the ministers in this church to be men and women of prayer. All of us. You cannot become an overcomer if you're a prayerless person. Prayer must be your lifestyle. Prayer must be your way of living. Are you hearing me? Prayer must be your lifestyle and your way of living. You can't do without prayer. Saturate your life with a life of prayer. Discipline yourself to pray. Love prayer with everything in you. Cultivate that anointing of prayer. Stire in you the grace of prayer. Even if it is not there, connect to it by faith and by the grace of God. Just say, I can never be a prayerless man. Some years back when I was raising up, God gave me a grace because I knew the power of prayer. And I said, God, I want to be a man of prayer. Teach me how to pray. If you are looking for people to pray on earth, find me. And can you register me in, on your list of men you can trust with life prayer? Can you put me on number one, Lord? And can you put an underline on my, my name? Because this thing, I really see its power. And it is working. And it works. Yeah. Hallelujah. It works. Situations it change. Circumstances it change when men pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Prayer opens doors which have been closed. Prayer opens the heavens. Prayer breaks the chains and the shackles and the fetters of some man. So when we pray, the power of God descends into our situation. And every situation... There is a spirit behind it, orchestrating it, working it out. Whatever you see, you are not happy. There is a spirit of sadness and grief and sorrow that is coming up. Whenever you are taken with any kind of lifestyle, sinful lifestyle, don't think that you are born to sin. No. You only yielded to the temptation, and you've, but God did not design you to sin. He designed you to live a glorious and holy life, by the way. But... The devil wants you to do what? Of course, you know from the beginning in the garden when how he found a man and his wife completely happy. And not ashamed of anything. Covered with the beauty of God's splendor and glory. And then says, did God surely say you should not eat on that, on that tree which, uh, uh, of the knowledge of good and evil? And the woman says, yes, God says that the day we eat, we shall die. Oh, God is very clever. He wants you to be like, like him. That's why he stopped you. But can you imagine? Now, how could they forget they were already created in the same image and the same likeness? And the devil says, God wants you to become like him. If I was him, I would say, devil, you serpent. Don't you know I'm already like him? I'm already like him. So you want me to become like him how? That was a temptation. And the moment they accepted, she accepted and ate and also took to the husband. Hello? She ate it and then did what? <laughs> so husbands, have you heard? It doesn't mean that when they bring us a fruit, we should simply eat it. Amina. Because Adam should have been strong enough to say, my wife. But you remember what God said? 
But he simply says, oh, it is good for the eyes and also for the mouth. And he ate. And from that day, trouble came. And these men, immediately they recognized that they were very naked as they were born. So they went to hide themselves behind the trees. But you can never run away from God. You can't hide, can you? And to make matters worse, after hiding, God continued to go where they were. They were hearing footsteps. So they got, they got the fig leaves and sold them together and covered them to hide their private uh, shameful places which ate. But don't you know that when the sun comes, it's got, those fig leaves are going to dry up. And all your nakedness again is going to be exposed. That even God sees through those leaves. Hello? So you can't cover. So the devil is always trying to say, How do I get them out of the fellowship with their God? That's the plan. How do I get this woman who is addicted to the presence of God? This man loves prayer. This man practices the presence. This man practices walking in the anointing. This man talks great things. This man preaches faith. This man preaches holiness. One day the man of God told me, but, but you, you need to be careful. I said, why? Because you teach a lot against the, um, uh, you teach a lot on holiness and against the homosexuality. Don't you see most ministers who speak on those things, they are, they are the ones who end up falling. Ah, are you hearing? That does not look like a wisdom of God, does it? So that, it, don't talk about it because you may also, uh, don't you see this man of God? He used to talk about it, now he fell. No, we are going to keep preaching the truth to the very end, to the glory of God. So when we are praying, we bring God's power in effect. We bring God's anointing into our situation to break and destroy every yoke. We bring the fire of God down to burn every chain and every shackle, melt off all those chains that are holding you in bondage and in captivity. That's the power when you pray. You bring the fire down. You bring the glory down. You bring the anointing down. You bring the joy down. You bring the, 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 the healing down. You bring anything can come down through the channel of prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. You bring peace in your marriage. You bring happiness again. You bring unity, reconciliation, and togetherness. People pray. Hello? Pray. That's why choir members have been telling you, pray, lest you fall into temptation. And pray again. And pray even again. And pray again. And do what? Pray. And what? And pray again. And then pray. And again. Pray. And pray again. And after you have prayed again, do what? Pray. And after you have prayed again, do what? Pray again, and God will come into your situation. God will come into your circumstance. God will come into your condition. God will come into your home. God will come into your career. God will come into your business. I remember when I was still working, I excelled all the time. And I, because what, what made me to become a manager of excellence in my space, in my time, I understood the power of prayer. I never went in the office without praying. That's why I solved the problem that people said, this man is very wise. Who taught him these things? They, they demoted the expatriate and promoted me. A German man who taught me about baking and all that. In a space of two years, I performed better than him. True story on record. He was skillful, but he didn't have the anointing. Give Jesus a clap of praise. You are not hearing me. I said he was very skillful. He taught me the methods of baking, but he lacked the anointing. 
Now when I learned the skill, I put on added the anointing and then I shone greater. Hallelujah! You can realign situations. And I removed him and promoted me. That's how I became a production manager. After a German man, Michael Ossens, being demoted, removed. They put him on a first leave. I beat him by far in the results. True story. In quality and in quantity. And the general manager says, how are you doing it? You can change your career in that office. You can change your ministry. Amen. People could have come earlier than you in this ministry. You can rise up to the ladder of greatness. Are you hearing me? When Pastor Masters came at the UCC, I began, I told the people, let's go back home every Thursday. The youth, that's how Youth on Fire was born in my sitting room and started praying with them. And Pastor Masters came, the student at the UCC there. And Pastor Masters found some of the people who were ministers already in this church. But the boy gave himself to pray. Pastor Masters came only praying in Uganda. I don't know what was the problem. And when the fire was set ablaze, he began to pray in the Holy Ghost. More than people I had. True story. And very soon, by the time he finished at UCC, he was very sure God has called him into ministry. And to us, we could see the God's callings on the young man. And we opened the space. He didn't even go to look for jobs. The same happened with Bosco. The same happened with Apostle Frank and many other ministers in this church. Same happened with Beth. Same happened with Pastor Ada. These were students here. They had just come to study in Kabbalah. They were not born pastors as you see them. But the, the thing is that they entered into the anointing by association. The great thing they did to themselves was to get close proximity with my spirit. And they got fire. And they, they, they all decided not to go back to their places. They have a bigger picture to live in life for. And today they are creating impact. Absolutely, I can tell you, I can go on and on. All the battles that we have fought in our home, it is through prayer. We have invoked God's presence in our situations. And we have seen God intervene, even when we have said it, there is no more our way. Even us, when we concluded that now this is beyond us but we did not give up in prayer even God came and turned around even what looked impossible come on somebody shout a big hallelujah prayer changes things I wish I could speak to you, to you even more Amina do you know that when it is declared impossible and then it becomes possible because you prayed you prayed impossibility you prayed the, the impossibility out and prayed the possibility in. Are you hearing me? It is true. It is true. Beloved, you have a future. You can reshape. You can redefine. It is not too late for you. I repeat, you have a future. You can reshape it. You can redefine it if you hear my voice and you begin to set your life in prayer. It is. Don't simply let your life hunger on two chances of men, on two circumstances. Men have no key to your destiny. Heaven has a key to your future, to your destiny, and to your life. 
So when you pick the key of prayer, enter into your destiny. Enter into your future in the name of Jesus and live it in alignment with God's purpose and will for which he thought carefully and uniquely about you and designed you and sent you on this earth in the name of Jesus as the ambassador of heaven, as a messenger of God, as a representative, as the agent of revival, as a missionary on the earth. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. Beloved, let's usher in the glory of God and the kingdom of God in our homes, in our families, wherever we are. Let us make men of this world envious of us. Until they say, but how does he do it? Amen. You, the weapons of warfare. Give it to me before I close. The weapons of warfare are not canon. No. We don't use cannon weapons to change the landscape. We don't use cannon weapons. Come on, Second Corinthians, just, just get, get that one. So we don't apply the, their weapons. For them, they will come with the kind of weapons. What are the kind of weapons? Physical fighting, gossip, slander, hatred, fighting, using natural methods or kind of methods. Second Corinthians 10.4. The weapons of affair are not kind of mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. We use mighty weapons. How is that? How are we using prayer as a mighty weapon to bring down strongholds? Remember we said your mind is bombarded with every negativity, with every negative force, with every tormenting spirit, with every tormenting thought in your life. Hopelessness, despair. You look at yourself, you give up about your tomorrow, you feel you are born from poor families, you think you are poor because your parents are poor, you think you are not educated because your parents did not pay your school fees. Every time you look at this one, you say this until you turn all the blame to everybody. And when you are finished blaming your parents, you blame, you blame the government, you blame Mum Seven and his NRM, and after you are blaming them, you come back and now to your pastor, you, you castigate him, you put him there, you say the problem is my pastor, he doesn't give me chance to pray, to serve, to preach. What's wrong with you? Definitely, I cannot give you a microphone to preach when you have no substance. Are you hearing me? But if you rise up, I carry spirit of judgment and discernment. I will see that God is raising you up and give you opportunity in the name of Jesus. Nobody can shut you down. There is no bishop, no pastor, no devil that can stop your progress. Did you hear what I said? No man can. You see me here? I have no power to stop you. You can stop yourself. So you can push your way up. Break the barrier and the spirit. Break the firmament. Break the obstacle. Take off the lead from your life. If you are not satisfied with that level. Lift the lead. Lift up the ceiling. There is another space. Beyond. Are you hearing me? Oh, in Jesus mighty name. Come on, give him praise. If you are not satisfied with this level of faith. Why don't you go up in faith? If you don't like the knowledge and wisdom you have who has caused you to stop seeking after wisdom did Solomon pray for wisdom and he received it so if you pray for wisdom won't you receive it didn't James say if any man lacks wisdom he should pray so what do you want me to tell you so you don't have wisdom to succeed in life you don't have wisdom really to make money hello you want to die poor what is your trouble? If a man lacks wisdom, what should he do? James chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Read that. 
Pray. Pray and change your future. Pray and open up another destiny. Pray and expand your territory. We saw the other time a man was tired of living in Kafunda, living in a pine. His name was Jabez. And he says, Oh, bless me indeed, oh God, enlarge my territory. And I may not cause pain. And God granted him his request. What about you? Mark to James, let me put myself up to finish. Oh God. Beloved, your life is not hanging on chance, but on choice of following God hard. On choice of living a life of prayer. Even in the story of the widow, the shrewd judge denied her justice. But she said, I got to something. Persistently went in. And in that, Jesus said, Men ought to pray always and not to grow weary. Always. So Jesus used that parable to teach us about the power of persistence in prayer. That is Luke 18. And I said that uh, persistence you need to write that in capital letter. Persistence breaks resistance. How stronger is the resistance? Your persistence will wear out resistance. Persistent prayer. Persist. You see, prayer brings the future into your present. So, if you don't engage another gear in prayer, you only stay in a present that is not experiencing your breakthrough. You stay in a present all the time that is in field saturated with insufficiency, with complaints, with pain, with obstacles, with suffering, with retardation, stagnation, and all those things around it. One year after another, rotating in the same circle of suffering, the same circle of hardship, in the same circle because you are not changing and breaking the circle of prayerlessness. If any man is suffering, let him pray. The story will change. If any man lacks wisdom, let him pray. What are you hearing? <laughs> and when they were assembled together and Jesus commanded them, he said, pray until you shall be endued with the power from on high. Look at 24 verse 49. Pray until you shall be endured. So are you lacking power? You are not endued with the power? You don't know how to wear the power of God with you? You don't know how to carry power and, 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 and carry the garment of power around your life? You don't know? Pray until you are lacking endowment, clothes, being closed with power. You don't know how to get close with the power from heaven. How do they get Close with the power from above by prayer. So it's a prayer until you shall be closed with the power. So there's a place where a man can be closed with the power of God as he commit. That's why I carry such a powerful anointing because it is easy. I know how to plug into the anointing. I know how to release the anointing of God in my life. That's why I tell people I can't lack the oil, the anointing of God because it is easy. I know the key. God has put an open check for all of us. If any man wants to receive endowment, what should they do? Let them pray until the endowment happens. Power cometh. Yes. I, I, 
can't copy on this time already. We'll just stand up on our feet. To God be all the glory. I'll continue in the second service building on this. Give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Is there somebody charged up? Are you charged enough to go and navigate and charter a new course of your life? Are you so much charged with the fire to pray? Are you so much charged with an anointing of prayer? Are you so much charged up with enthusiasm, with a spirit, with a passion for prayer? Amina, that you are leaving this service. You are carrying the weight of his glory on your life to go and stir your life and pray stuff out of your family, out of your business, out of your marriage, out of your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Ooh, hallelujah. If there's something seated in you that must lift off, that you say, this enough is enough. To the glory of and praise of God. Beloved, I will take you through the whole Bible. I'll show you countless men and women of God in the Bible, in the Holy Bible, in the Holy Scriptures, who changed their course because they chose the life of prayer. I show you Abraham. He prayed and he became a father of faith. I was created unto him a man of righteousness. I'll show you of Isaac. And he prayed and prospered and reaped a hundredfold in that same year. I'll show you of Jacob who tarried the whole night on the stone and he dreamt the heavens open and the ladders coming from heaven on the earth. Angels descending and angels ascending. And he says, God is in this place. And this is no other but the gate of heaven. And God is here. And I did not know. And his story changed and God said, your name from this day shall no, long, no longer be Jacob as a planter, a liar. Your name shall be Israel, the firstborn. Your destiny can change. Your testimony can change. Your name can change. Your personality can change. Your ministry can change. Your ability can change. Your capacity can change. Your vision can change. Your fire, your life can change. Everything around you is subject to take a new course. Oh, when you don't, when you are no longer, when you are, when you are tired of stagnation, when you are tired of suffering, when you are tired of lack, when you are tired of powerlessness, when you are tired of fruitless life, a life that has no any impact at all, pray and the story is going to be different. Lift your hands. Oh, Open your mouth and speak in other tongues. There is a divine connection right now with your spirit and with the spirit of God as you pray. Oh, <laughs> Glory to God. And I love that part in the Bible. And when they had prayed, Acts chapter number four and verses 31. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with power from above. <laughs> oh, when they had prayed, 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 the place was shaken and they were all filled with the power from on high. Ushi Karaba Santa. Open your mouth and speak with other tongues. 
There is a fresh endowment, a fresh oil, a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost coming upon you. A spirit of God, a spirit of prayer, a spirit of diligence, a spirit of passion, a spirit of zeal. Release in Jesus' name. When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken, and they were all of them filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled. Come on, lift your voice as you pray, and the Lord shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you get filled with the Holy Ghost, things in your life that have held you captive, Come on, lift your hands and speak in other tongues as this is the last moment you have. Just two minutes of fiery prayer. Lift your voice. Don't hold back. Let there be a connection. Let there be an intercourse of your spirit with the Holy Ghost. A union with the Holy Ghost. A divine connection with the spirit of might and power to your spirit. I want to hear your voice like the voice of many waters. I want to hear your voices like the voices of many waters lifting the voice of prayer. As you're praying, your family is changing. As you're praying, your future is changing. As you're praying, your career is changing. As you are praying, your destiny is opening up. As you are praying, your calling is established. As you are praying, the power of God falls on your life. As you are praying, resources are supplied. As you are praying, all your needs are supplied according to the riches which are in his glory by Christ Jesus. As you are praying, you are receiving the healing power. As you are praying, the tumor is disappearing. As you are praying, the curse is melting off. As you are praying, the chains are falling off. As you pray, things are happening. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Mandele reprose, dele bosha rabash, reprose kora base kete. As you are praying, you are receiving a baptism of the Holy Ghost. You have never spoken in other tongues. Right now, you are receiving a baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is filling you. Jesus is baptizing you with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Ghost is supplying the gifts of the Holy Ghost in you. Some of you are receiving the word of wisdom. Some of you are being filled with the word of knowledge. And some of you are receiving the gift of prophets and the gift of faith. And some of you are receiving the gift of the working of miracles right now. And some of you are receiving the gift of working of miracles and the gift of discerning of the Spirit. And you are receiving the gift of, of speaking with other tongues and the gift of interpretation in the tongues. And you are receiving the power of God in your life to function. You are receiving a new anointing to operate, to walk in the gifts of the Holy Ghost by a mighty anointing of God. Thank you, Jesus. Something is happening. Something is happening. Something is happening. Something is breaking forth. Something is breaking out. Something is breaking asunder. Something is breaking into your spirit. Something is breaking on your life. Heaven is descending over you. Heaven is falling upon you. The anointing is falling afresh upon you. A fresh anointing is falling upon you. A fresh fire is falling upon you. The Lord is rekindling, lifting a holy fire in your spirit. Something is happening. The past is gone. A future is created. A newness of life is breaking out. Impartation of divine strength. Impartation of supernatural infusion in the power of the Holy Ghost. A Jesus mighty name. Somebody shout a big amen. Shout a big amen. And lift your hands up. And say from this day, I receive a new anointing of the spirit of prayer. My prayer life is activated by the fire of God. In the name of Jesus, as I pray, I redefine my future. I redefine my destiny. I redefine my identity. In the name of Jesus, the old is gone and everything has become new. In the name of Jesus, so the big amen. Okay.
okay? Lift your hands again. And say in the name of Jesus, through prayer, I open the door of opportunity in my life. By prayer, I open the door of divine favor and promotion in my life. In the name of Jesus, through prayer, I tap in the anointing of healing for my body, for my soul, for my emotional life, and for my mental life. In the name of Jesus, I'm totally free from every yoke because of the anointing and every bondage in my life is now destroyed because of the anointing and the power of God that they have tapped in through prayer in the name of Jesus Christ shout a big amen God bless you Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much. Praise God. Get your tithe, get your offering.